I'm Claire Connery. I'm an attorney with the law firm Smith & Lowney. This is my managing attorney, Noel Lowney. Um, is everyone for some of these press packets? Um, there's maybe a couple more up there, and the same materials are available on our website, smithandlowney.com. Um, we appreciate your interest in the lawsuit that we filed this morning. But before we get to the lawsuit, um, we're going to hear from some of the plaintiffs to this suit, many of whom are in the audience today, and we're joined by two at the table. And we're going to start with a statement from the lead plaintiffs, Melissa Nicky Matt. Hi. My name is Melissa Matt. Uh, Nikki, to those who know me well. I'm 38 years old, and I'm a cancer survivor. And I will be for the rest of my life. If you had told me two years ago that I'd be standing here talking about cancer, chemotherapy, and my right to medical care, I would, wouldn't have believed you, because cancer was not my plans. But the thing is, is that cancer or any illness is never part of anybody's plan. It sneaks up on you. It can surface at your most vulnerable moment and change everything that you've ever dreamed about. And I still feel incredibly vulnerable, not only from the frightening specter of cancer that I'll have to live with for the rest of my life, but also the fear that Rob McKenna and others with a political agenda are desperately seeking to take away the Affordable Care Act. And I would not be alive right now without the Affordable Care Act and its provisions for preventative care and the eradication of lifetime insurance caps for men and women like me. I was diagnosed with aggressive HER2 positive breast cancer on September 16, 2010, just nine months after being laid off of my job. I had been vigorously job hunting, had a few really promising interviews, and in my downtime, I rode my bike almost 100 miles a week. I was focused, focused on my future, and I thought I was doing everything that I could to stay healthy. When I found the lump in my left breast and the lymph node the cancer had spread to, I was lucky. Because of the Affordable Care Act and my ability to retain insurance through COBRA, I was able to go directly to the Breast Health Care Center where I was quickly diagnosed. And what I can only describe as a whirlwind, I had surgery to remove my, remove my left breast, and I started 16 rounds of conventional chemotherapy on November 4th, 2010. And since finishing those rounds of conventional chemo, I have continued to do infusions of the targeted chemotherapy drug Perceptin, in fact, I had an infusion yesterday, and um, if Swedish could start a punch card system, I'm ready for my free treatment now at any time. Um, I think I'd be there. Uh, I'm also keenly aware of how tenuous this so-called luck is. Currently, I'm lucky to have insurance. I'm lucky that the Affordable Care Act removed lifetime insurance caps. That's a, a real concern for me, since I required so much chemo, two mastectomies, and two more surgeries immediately following my final infusion of Taxol, not to mention the continued care that I'll require for the rest of my life as a result of this diagnosis and the after effects of cancer treatment. With lifetime caps, I would blow through my coverage and I'd be left with nothing. And then what? I mean, it's, it's unthinkable. I look at my medical bills and I realize that they total over $250,000 for just over six months of treatment, and that was after the most expensive part of my treatment was already over. And while most of my girlfriends are out shopping for shoes and handbags, I'm trying to figure out how to pay bills for chemo, surgery, and monthly insurance premiums. If Rob McKenna is allowed to speak for the people of Washington, then he should listen to us first, because I'm not alone. And instead of working for the well-being of people like me, he seems, to content, he seems to be content to leave us without medical care, without clear options or a safety net, and for somebody like me, maybe without a future. I'm 38 years old, and because I was paying attention and had the care of some incredible people in the medical field, I'm still here. And I want to be here five years from now. I want to see my niece and nephew grow up. Position or who might find themselves in my position because it could be 
you. It could be your wife, your sister, or your child. We deserve the support we were promised from the Attorney General's office. We deserve to live. Thank you. Attorney General Rob McKenna filed suit against the Affordable Care Act, I found myself feeling extremely vulnerable again, unsure of what would happen to me if the law was overturned by the Supreme Court. With so many threats to Medicaid, I don't feel like it's safe to depend on it either. And though I'm grateful to have it, Medicaid is also limited and doesn't offer treatment for the chronic issues still ongoing from the car accident. I would like to go back to work. I still have dreams of being a small business owner. But instead of pursuing my career, I'm feeling trapped. I, if I earn more than 900 a month, I lose the coverage that I have. If I go to work for someone else, how will I pay for childcare? I'm only 37 years old. I've already been pushed to the brink of bankruptcy because of medical bills. I'm facing permanent nerve damage, and my health care coverage, which could be guaranteed by the ACA, is at stake. I understand that the Attorney General might have felt he had reason to file a suit based on what he believed, but he is misrepresenting the wishes of the people of Washington State. Ever since the ACA became law, I have been hopeful that there would be a time when I could find health care for me and my family that we could afford. But what Rob McKenna has done by participating in this suit could instead take that hope away from me and other women and families in the state of Washington. Furthermore, 
The Affordable Care Act eliminates lifetime caps on health benefits for nearly 937,000 women in Washington alone. As Ms. Mackey and Ms. Pino's stories today have told us, lifetime caps can be terrifying and they can be devastating. And I want to note that no one in the Supreme Court litigation is arguing that the women's care provisions of the Affordable Care Act are unconstitutional. So that means that Washington Attorney General Rob McKenna had a choice. He had a choice in the Supreme Court litigation, either support women's health and the protections afforded by the Affordable Care Act or side with a partisan vote. Indeed, Rob McKenna joined arguments before the Supreme Court asking the court to strike it all. So I'm gonna turn it over to Noel Bounty to tell you what we're doing about that. Hi, good morning. Noel Downey, uh, one of the attorneys for the plaintiffs. We filed this case this morning in King County Superior Court. Um, we're asking for three things. First, we're asking for a court ruling that Rob McKenna breached the ethical duties that he owed as a lawyer when he asked the United States Supreme Court to invalidate the entire Affordable Care Act, including its protections for women's health, even though he acknowledges that those provisions are constitutional, severable, and are in the best interest of his client. In fact, it's his official position that the United States Supreme Court should only invalidate the individual mandate and should leave the rest of these provisions in effect. But he submitted briefs to the United States Supreme Court asking the exact opposite, to invalidate the entire act. Taking legal action against your client's interest like that is one of the most serious breaches of ethical duties that a lawyer can make. In fact, it is often a reason for disbarment. And what's worse is here, Rob McKinnon admits that he opposed his client's interest because of a partisan vote by elected attorney generals that represent other states. The second thing we're asking, we're asking the court to force Rob McKenna to file corrective pleadings in the in US Supreme Court so that Washington State is on record as supporting the other provisions of the act and asking, again, the court to uphold them regardless of its decision on the individual mandate. Finally, we're asking the court to rule that Rob McKenna breached another fundamental duty of lawyers and that's the duty to tell the truth. We have the duty as a lawyer to tell the truth to our clients and also to third parties. And here, Rob McKenna did it. He issued false and misleading statements again and again using resources of the state of Washington and on the website for the office of the Attorney General. Now, I would look, I would, ask you to look at the complaint where we've got all of these documents uh, cited and they're also posted to our website at smithandlowney.com. Now I also encourage <coughs> you to read the expert report that's attached to the complaint by Professor R Robert Aronson. He is one of the state's top experts on lawyer's ethics. He literally wrote the book on the law of lawyering. He will be tested, testifying to the court that Rob McKenna did breach his ethical duties. In the next six weeks, the woman we represent will put Mr. McKenna's unethical conduct and his attack on women's health care on trial. And given the extraordinary facts of this case, we're confident that the court will provide the relief that we're asking for. I want to especially thank you two um, for sharing your stories, and also Cindy uh, for sharing your story in the complaint, and for the other, uh, also to the other plaintiffs who came, and thank you all for coming. We're available to answer questions as our plaintiffs. Mr. Lonnie, is it possible the court would just admonish without instructing him to file a new brief for the Supreme Court? I think that the court will make a ruling on his ethical conduct, or in this case, unethical conduct, and I think that uh, it will 
likely tell him under a writ of mandamus that he has to correct the pleadings so that the United States Supreme Court pleadings do reflect the position of the state of Washington. So is it the position of the state or is it just his stated opinion earlier? Has the state ever come out officially through the legislature, through the governor, through anybody with a, a statement that our position is that only the mandate is unconstitutional? No, but Mr. McKenna agrees his position as well is that only the mandate is unconstitutional and that the remainder of it should stay in effect. But I would note also that Washington State has been a leader in protecting women's health. Um, many of the provisions protecting women's health that are in the Affordable Care Act are, are already in our state law, but not the key ones that we're talking about today. Also, Washington State has twice enacted legislation that uh, implements the Affordable Care Act. So I think we are, as a state, on record as supporting these other provisions. Well, why now, instead of when the um, lawsuit that's before the Supreme Court was filed? Well, I think, as, as Claire mentioned, as soon as uh, the second anniversary came around, I think people really started to understand that the battlegrounds of this court case were going to be over severability, especially when the United States Supreme Court's Court asked for a briefing on that subject. And so it was at that point that Rob McKenna really had the choice of whether he was going to stand with the people or whether he was going to stand behind this partisan vote. And it's at that point that he made the wrong decision. So that we wish we could have started this earlier because we actually would be farther along now. So you're, you're saying the timing isn't political at all with the um, governor's campaign right now? Uh, the timing is about the United States Supreme Court case. But to follow up on that, uh, you, know, you have filed uh, lawsuits against other gubernatorial candidates. So why shouldn't we think that this is part of the campaign? There's a legitimate issue for these women, but isn't this also part of the campaign? Well, I, I guess I would sure. turn that over to someone else. Yeah, this case is really about Rob McKenna's performance as the Attorney General and critically about the important issue of women's health care. And I don't know, I think that Anithia shared her views on this as well, um, if you'd like to. I mean, all I can oh, please, please stand. All I can say is that you know I didn't get cancer for political reasons, and I just haven't done 20 months of treatment for a governor's race. I want to be treated fairly, and I want to be taken care of, and that's what I deserve. And I don't care who's governor, I don't care who's attorney general. I just want whoever that person is to care about the people of the state. And I think that's the issue here, and I think that's what the focus ought to be. No, can you, you mentioned um, laws in the previous statements. Can you give some examples? Well, they're all on our website, and in fact, we also have a video from his, uh, Rob McKenna's official website. But over and over again, for example, Mr. McKenna told the people of Washington that his uh, lawsuit was not going to invalidate the entire act, but was and it would have no effect on the entire act, but would only affect the individual mandate. He also tried to underplay the importance of his ethical breach by saying that the Obama administration had the same position as he did, which is patently false. Since of course the Obama administration so supports separability and wants to keep these provisions in place. I, I still don't quite understand the question of the timing. You know, the, the Supreme Court asked for those briefs on separability many, 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 many months ago. Again, if that was an issue, why not file this earlier? Well, I, I wasn't asked to file it earlier, and some of you may be paying closer attention to this than me, but I have only seen these briefs and recognized uh, the ethical breach very recently as we were preparing in the last three weeks. Um, you know, more power to them if other people were following it more closely and understood this, and if they had brought the suit sooner, we would be further along right now. Who's gonna pay for this lawsuit? Um, right now, we're not being paid, but anyone who wants to make a contribution, we <laughs> would be accepting them, and we have received some contributions from our plaintiffs. 
explain severability? Yes, that's a good question. Um, essentially, the attack on the Affordable Care Act in the United States Supreme Court is focused on the individual mandate. And that's the only thing that's being attacked. If it is held severable, then the court could potentially decide that the individual mandate is unconstitutional, but the remainder, the protections for women's health, the ab abolition of lifetime caps, would stay in effect. Does it have a severability clause, the act itself? Um, you know, I refer you to that. I don't believe that there is one, but I do believe the argument that are happening in the Supreme Court are about that the uh, the intent of, of Congress was for it to be severable. Other people argue that it's not. And, and the issue here is that Rob McKenna submitted a brief saying that this that there is uh, that the individual mandate is not separable and the entire thing should be thrown out even though he acknowledges that these protections that we're talking about should be separate and should stay in place. Finding it in King County Superior Court means you're possibly three different courts away from a final decision. Because this is against a state officer, did you consider the possibility of filing directly with the state Supreme Court? Uh, we th usually the you know, usually the Washington State Supreme Court would prefer a case like this be begun in Superior Court, but that would be an, that would have been another option. Did you consider it? Yes. Why did you reject it? I mean, timing may be critical. And well, uh, in uh, terms filing of getting, with the Supreme Court, if they had taken it, could have got you a fairly rapid decision. I think we will get a much faster decision in King County Superior Court, and that's why we chose that. We will get a injunction, a mandamus, uh, we believe, very shortly. Um, and while, while it is true that Rob McKenna would have an opportunity to appeal that, um, he, we, we would hope that at that point he would comply with it instead. The Supreme Court's expected to rule by the end of next month on this. Uh, is, there, is there time? It, it, it's possible. You know, that's one of the questions that's been asked. but. We point out that many of the very important cases before the United States Supreme Court don't get decided quick. Citizens United and Roe v. Wade both uh, were re-argued and were decided the following year. So I don't think any of us can know what's happening with the justices or, or when a decision will happen. It could be next year for all we know. And the state Supreme Court, uh, when it was, when McCain was challenged there, gave him wide discretion to file a lawsuit. So, it, why, do you, why do you think you can somehow now have the court force him to do something he has not wanted to do in the past? We don't question his ability to file a lawsuit to challenge the individual mandate, and that's what the Supreme Court decided. But they didn't look at this question. They've never decided uh, whether or not Rob McKenna could attack uh, the entire Affordable Care Act even after he admitted that it's in the best interest of his client for it to remain in effect. But um, why are you focusing on women's, the women's health provisions? I'm sure there's male cancer survivors who are also hitting life, could be hitting a lifetime cap and are benefiting from the Affordable Care Act. That's true. Um, our clients are women who are focusing on this issue. Um, but it would be great if other people joined in. I, this obviously has an effect on, on many different populations. Hey, Noel, isn't EPICS a matter of the Bar Association? Is this your best cause of action? Uh, yeah, the Bar Association would have, uh, could look at the ethical uh, questions here, but they couldn't actually do anything about it. They could not force Rob McKenna to change his pleadings, and in the past, at least five or six times, the Washington courts have taken cases like this. They've looked at the actions of the Attorney General, and they've decided whether or not the actions they took in litigation were proper or not. So this is the proper way to bring the case. Do you have other causes of action? We, there's two causes of action. We're asking for an injunction under the Declaratory Judgment Act, and we're also asking for a writ of mandamus. That's essentially the court telling a state official to do something. 
Do you also file a complaint with the Bar Association? Yeah. Why? Is there similar cases in other states? I mean, it seems like this argument can be made by many states, you know, that certain states have similar laws that Again, I, there should be. I don't know that there is. I want to follow up on, on that question, though, about choosing women as the plaintiffs. Is, is that because women are a crucial voting constituency in the governor's race? Well, I, this issue is, the governor's race is so insignificant compared to the stakes in the United States Supreme Court <laughs> that it almost makes no, the question almost makes no sense. I, and I think it's been responded to. So does that mean that you think that other than just focusing on the transaction, you actually think the outcome of this could in some way affect the future of the Affordable Care Act? Absolutely. I mean, right now, we don't know um, when the United States Supreme Court will decide. We also don't know how close it is. We don't know which way they're leaning. We don't know when in the process they could get a majority or a plurality for a decision. So, but what we do know is right now, the states have lined up lockstep based upon a partisan vote to oppose uh, the entire act. And we think it will be significant if one state or maybe more states uh, decide to break off and, and say that, no, we're going, our state supports separability and supports the remainder of the act uh, being in place even if the individual mandate were to fall. You think that the justices are going to take that into consideration now that they're deliberating the arguments that they've already made? Uh, Cer certainly they could. Certainly they could. I, I, again, we don't know, but everything is important. I mean, obviously, Rob McKenna felt it was important enough that he signed and submitted a brief. So, yes, it's important. Could, it, could you be more specific about which which provisions of the Affordable Care Act would, would affect your clients? Because, because, as you said, Washington already has many protections that have gone beyond uh, what we started with. So what, what's in the Affordable Care Act that would come out that would actually affect I think I highlighted some of those, but to, to recap, it's the preventative care measures, and that includes prenatal care, that includes well-limited visits. And that's, that not, that's not covered under state, uh, the state laws? No. Um, it also includes breast cancer screening, cervical oh, cancer okay. screening without cost sharing, and critically, as we've heard, the lifetime caps. John, in uh, your pleadings, you state that Attorney General McKenna said that if he had decided to go for separability, he feels he would have had to have filed a separate course of action which would be cost prohibitive. Do you disagree with that? Could he have removed himself from the class action and filed a supportive brief? Or what is your position? Absolutely. It's unquestionable that when you are a plaintiff's attorney in a case, you do not have to make a decision by majority rules. The federal rules of civil procedure allow for us, the different plaintiffs to take different positions. And here, um, his ethical duties required that. Well, again, thank you for coming. I, I know that there is some contact information, so if, if folks have further questions later on, they can get in touch with us. And also, all the documents that we've talked about today are, are posted on our website at smithandlowney.com.